All right, for the purpose of this lesson is to just give you a quick breakdown of the different oil burner parts that we commonly find when we are servicing and repairing oil burners. So it's important to learn all of the parts on an oil burner, what they do, how they're supposed to function, stuff like that. You know, it's good to see how they're designed and all that stuff. But we have several parts that are on an oil burner that we will typically find on a majority of them. There are several manufacturers of oil burners. I mean, you have Carlin burners, you have Beckett burners, you have Riello burners. But a lot of these have pretty much all of the same common parts. They just may look a little different and may function a little bit differently. So we have our motor. We have a blower wheel. We're going to have a ignition transformer on there. We're going to have a blower housing, an adjustable air inlet collar, a flexible coupler, a fuel pump, an air tube, a mounting flange, end cone, static disc, nozzle, and electrodes. Those are your main components that all operate an oil burner. So your blower motor is usually a small fractional horsepower motor, somewhere probably maybe like a quarter horsepower motor. And that motor is going to be used to turn the blower wheel and spin the fuel pump. Okay, it is mounted on the burner by an end flange and the shaft protrudes into the burner assembly through the blower wheel and has a flexible coupler on the end. <clears throat> the blower wheel is fastened to your motor shaft. The fan wheel can also be called a squirrel cage fan wheel because it resembles a treadmill device <coughs> Sorry, used in a squirrel cage. The fan creates pressure and forces air into the air tube of the burner to help support combustion. When we are servicing oil burners, we want to make sure that that blower wheel is nice and clean, that it's not caked up with a bunch of dirt and, and grime that are inside the wheels, because that will affect the way a burner actually operates. Your flexible coupler extends uh, the motor shaft to the shaft of the fuel pump and helps turn the pump. The shaft is not always in perfect alignment, so a flexible coupler helps prevent vibration. When we are working on burners, we want to inspect the coupler. We want to make sure that the ends of our couplers are not damaged in any um, sort of way. If the ends of those couplers are stripped out or broken or anything like that, your blower and coupler and, and fuel pump probably will not spin. You need to have the flexible coupler installed in order for the fuel pump to spin. Okay, your fuel pump is a rotary pump that can uh, pump at a high pressure. Usually factory set at about 150 PSI. Um, however, there are newer oil pumps that are operating at a higher pressure, um, but you just have to simply look at the manufacturer's recommendations and manufacturer specs to see what the oil pump should be um, set at, but the pressure is normally set at somewhere around 100 PSI, an internal spring-loaded bypass allows some oil to circumvent to the pump inlet in order to let to limit the pressure to the nozzle. Some oil pumps will have a uh, oil solenoid or an oil cutoff valve on them 
Some oil pumps will not. It just depends on the model that, you, that you're dealing with. There are two types of pumps used in oil heat. You're going to have a single stage pump and a two stage pump. I will be covering oil pumps uh, a little bit more in depth in a, in a later lesson. So you will have your oil nozzles. The high pressure of 100 PSI forces the oil through a calibrated oil nozzle. The nozzle prepares the oil to be mixed with the air by breaking the oil into tiny droplets that vaporize easily. Remember, oil needs to be atomized in order for it to burn. So by adding and shooting oil through a small calibrated hole, we are now able to make that oil vaporize so when I add my spark from my electrodes, I am now able to burn the oil. It also meters the oil in the correct amount, and as the oil leaves the nozzle, it is set into a swirling pattern to help it mix with the air. The pattern can be adjusted to fit a specific application. Then you are going to have your ignition transformer. Remember, oil has to be ignited. Okay, the high voltage transformer supplies approximately 10,000 volts at a very low amperage. It is much like the voltage at the spark plug of a car. The transformer is mounted on the gun burner as part of the assembly. Your electrodes, the voltage from the transformer is supplied to the electrodes. They perform almost the same function as a spark plug in a car. They control the spark and ignite the oil. Your blower housing does exactly what the name is. It holds the blower wheel and directs the airflow into the air tube. Your blower motor, your coupling and fuel pump are attached to the housing as well. Okay, your adjustable air inlet collar. This is used to regulate the air to the blower. This is the collar that we are going to use to adjust our air being supplied to our flame so that we can have proper combustion. This is the only air adjustment for combustion and is important for making correct combustion adjustments. Your air tube surrounds the oil nozzle assembly. The air from the blower is forced down the air tube under a slight pressure from your fan wheel. Your static disc is, is in the air tube and creates a resistance that backs up the air. The backed up air creates static pressure and increases the air velocity for the mixing the air with the atomized oil. Your end cone is the last component before the actual fire. It swirls the air from the air tube. It, that is, it, it, well, yeah, sorry. It swirls the air from the air tube to mix it with the atomized oil droplets. The more activity at the end cone, the better the oil droplets will be aerated and the better they will actually burn. When we are servicing oil burners, we want to make sure that the end cone is actually clean and that the end cone is not caked up with any sort of soot and debris because if that is the case, you're not going to get a good swirling effect and it's not going to atomize the oil and mix very well which will create a lot of soot uh, and smoke in some cases. So we want to make sure that the end cone is actually in good condition so that we actually do have and hold the correct flame pattern. Okay, and then lastly is your mounting flange. This is what's going to be used to mount the burner to your furnace or boiler. Usually with your mounting flange is going to come with a gasket because we obviously we do not want to have any extra air mixing in with the flame. So it's going to be gasketed off and then it's going to be bolted to the furnace or your boiler.